This is another day, special day that we come to you with great news from heaven because our God even today speaks. My brother, my sisters, let me tell you that you are blessed tonight because God is going to do great things in your life. This is a fact that God does not speak to us just for the sake of, of speaking. Now, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8 up to 10, the Bible says that as rain and ice can no law not come back to him before they have performed, they have called out the mission for which he had sent them. Likewise, his world shall never go back to him before it carries out the mission it has sent it for. For that join me to believe that God has a, a reason why tonight he has sent his, this word and for sure some things are going to happen. Yes, because it's not a man to tell lies. It is not God is not a son of man to repent. What he says, he does it and what he promises he fulfills it. Brothers and sisters, I greet you once again. I'm really swimming in the ocean of joy. I'm a happy man as I share with you this word because my heart rejoices in the Lord because God is, is here and he has come to do uh, great things for you. Now we are pursuing our, our, our series in our, our teachings of uh, spiritual growth. And we said that we will have 15 lessons. And today, this is our eighth lesson. And let me tell you, be attentive, expect great things because it is as important as the previous ones. And I know uh, even you will, you, will, you will really, you will share my opinion. You will agree with me that our God loves me. You have... You, you have not missed it to realize that our God is, 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 is a, a wise God, is an intelligent God, you know. The way he is, is he's taking us from one glory to another, in fact, is to, to, to make us grow, my friend, yes, and I know. Even the heart of God is, is, is happy. Me too, I am happy. I know you have already reached somewhere. You have become, oh, yeah, I know, you have become someone now. From where you were in the spiritual uh, things up to today, yes, there are great things that have happened in your knowledge, even in your spiritual growth. Hallelujah. Now, uh, as I may uh, remind you, the very first lessons we said a great a great prince a great princess who is born or was born to tell you that the very day you you were born spiritually when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior you became a great prince a great princess you don't look for another second person to tell you. No, the Bible says so. That to those who accept him as Lord and Savior, he gave them the power to become children of God. Not born by the power of a man and a woman, but born by the Spirit of God. That's why now we are spiritual. We are talking about the spiritual birth. Hallelujah. In the book of John chapter 1 verse 12. And the second lesson we said that we talked about the, the early days of princes and princesses. We said that though we are princes and princesses, but we are in a vulnerability, dependence, weak. Why? Because we are babies. So, people have to take care of us. People have to decide for us. People have, have to do everything for us. In fact, we are just there. Like other babies. But now we are growing. By the grace of God, we are growing. 
and now we are a, we come from baby baby babyhood now we are in childhood when we are in childhood now we are involved because now we want to take everything in our hands now we are involved in mistakes we are involved in accidents we are involved in uh, foolishness like other children okay but now there is a god who is there a forgiving god a, a, a caring god the god is near us to help us in our mistakes to make us grow hallelujah that's why the second the third lesson was let such to know god let us know god let us know god god revealed his heart unto us and to tell us even if you were you are in a, 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 a in mistakes whatever you've been and no, no don't say that i will kill you no i am your father come back to me hallelujah i will forgive you even if your sins are as red as scarlet i will forgive you don't go to kill yourself bring your your problems unto me okay that's why number four was now uh the prayer prayer the prayer makes god come to intervene in our lives god was telling us my heart for you but now as we have understood him now that we have known our god in our growth now we have because we are still children we call him in the book of acts of apostles the world wanted to kill to kill the church they killed jack uh, james and they tried to kill peter but the church prayed earnestly and God's intervention was there to rescue him. We need God's intervention in our childhood. If we do not pray, in fact, we will not come to what we want. We will not grow. We will die prematurely. We will backslide prematurely. In fact, we do not want even to pray to backslide. Now, lesson five, we talked about the word of God. We said, as children of God, how will we know what is around us? How will we know what God is doing for us? What we are entitled to? When we are promoted, when we are appointed, how will we know it? It's only through the word of God. And let me tell you, when God speaks, ay, 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 it's a law which is already passed. <laughs> there will be no, no, um, no parliament to come and to say the law is passed. No, God has spoken and it's already passed. <laughs> no one will come to say no. When God says yes, no one will say no. When he says no, no one will come to say yes. Hallelujah. That's why now. God told Abraham, your name was Abraham, but today I decide to change your name into Abraham. <laughs> now, when God speaks, my brother, my sister, to bless you, it's just time to stand up, to clap for him, to rejoice and to confirm, no, and to confess, to, pos to confess, yes, I am Abraham. I was a, a, a barren man. But today, God has made his decision. He has made this a law that I am Abraham. I am the father of all nations. Glory be to God. Father, I give you all the glory and honor. I bless you. I honor you. Oh God, I'm so happy. I am Abraham. Hallelujah. You start confessing what God has made you to be. Hallelujah. Don't ask anybody is it this or not no he has spoken it's god who spoke it's god who speaks <laughs> hallelujah now the following lesson was number six and we talked about faith faith it means you have a poss hallelujah you have possessed the law of god it, it came out of the heart of god 
And he said, I want you to be this and that. Now you have to, to respond. <laughs> you have to do what to respond, to accept what God has said, to, uh, to possess it. That's why eh, when he said your name is Abraham, he had to be Abraham. How did he become Abraham? By approaching uh, and knowing Sarah and they got what? A baby, a child. Hallelujah. Now God has decided to make to make us his children, his uh, his what his uh, princes and heirs. Now the next, uh, after having clapped for him, thanked him. Now we have to live like princes. We possess not only our titles, but also we possess the life, the characters, <laughs> the characteristic. Eh? The characteristic of a prince, the characteristic of a heir of God, we possess them. We change our life of slaves and we become the heirs of the kingdom of God, the princes and the princes of God. We start now. Don't tell me how. You know, you have to know how a prince lives. That's why the Bible is there. That's why God will tell you, do this and that. That's why the Holy Spirit will teach you. That's why I am here. Me too, to and other people to teach you. Hallelujah. Now, now you start now. Ah, no, it's when you say I do not have appetite. We will say it. Start eating the small, the little you you eat. The appetite will come. Yes, you cannot leave because before you have started, you agreed to leave. Some people tell them, stand up and walk, but they don't want to walk. How will you walk now if you don't try? Start now living like a prince and you it will come. <laughs> it will come. It's when you show God you want to learn that he will be interested in teaching you. God doesn't see the problem you have. No. He is involved in the solution of your problems. Yet when he told the Moses, Ma Moses, why are you crying? Why are you calling me? Do you mean that he had not seen the, uh, the waters before them? Or was he not aware of the, 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 the Egyptian soldiers behind? No, he knew. But he thought he wanted them to step in the problem. Hallelujah. It's when you step in the problems that the problems become become solution. It's when you start giving your poverty that your poverty will become what? Wealth. Do you remember that that what that widow? That Elijah told them, give even the little you have. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's when you give your, uh, your, your ignorance. When you say, God, I don't know what to do. But because you say, I have uh, the water must uh, what separate into. I walk now. I step in the problem. You, you didn't know what would happen. He didn't know. He gave his ignorance. Hallelujah! Don't ask me how you will become a prince. You are always a, already a prince. Now, don't ask me how you will do what, how you will you 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 will start living like a start doing something like a prince, and you will become a prince because God will be there. Now, when you have accepted the calling of God. He made you Abraham. He made you a prince. He made you a heir of the kingdom of his kingdom. You accepted through your faith. Now you sit in the in the in the what in a, in a, in the in the chair of the princes and the princesses in the hair of the 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 what the, the hair uh, in the chair of the hair of the kingdom of God. Let me tell you something will happen. Your enemies now will stand up. They will not be happy to see you rejoicing, enjoying your new status. They will want to kill you. They will want yourself to come and to tell God, I resign because it's too hard for me. I do not know what to do. Others will come with false teachings like the way the snake, uh, uh, the snake came to Eve. It was the, de the devil. In, um, came to Eve. Tell her, ah, 
Did God tell you not to eat of this tree? Say yes. He told us, even he insisted that whenever we eat of it, we will die. Do you see now? You know it. Now, he wants now to sow doubt in you. So that you may be rebellion against God. My friend, do not be rebellion against God. Because now, yesterday you, are a, you were a beggar. Today you are driving your, your bands. Today you are, you are, you are a, 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 how do you call it? A landlord or a landlady. And you forget God. You forget even to tell him thank you. You forget even uh, you used to fast seven days a, uh, 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 a semester. Nowadays, even one day you can no, you cannot do what fast. You used to call God, you used to worship Him, you used to cry before God. But now because you are driving, because you are owning your own house, oh, you have forgotten God. This is the beginning of your death. And God does want you to die. No, God wants to own you as a, a prince, as a princess, as a heir of his kingdom. That's why number seven we said, be holy, be holy as God is holy. Be loyal to God. Don't disappoint God. Because when now you have changed your what your ID, when you have changed your status, the enemy will come and he tell he, he wants you not he's jealous, they are jealous. Others they will come with the false teachings telling you don't give the tithe because the tithe used to be of old testament. <laughs> Uh, don't go to church. You can you can use your 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 screen TV. Don't go to church. Don't fast. The fasting was uh, was before Jesus, my friend. Those are false teachings that are for the uh, from the jealous people. Your teacher is God. Your boss is God. No one else. Don't do anything that God will not appreciate. God told me to tell you that he cannot do anything which is opposite his character. Is it character? Characteristic. Characteristic. If he says in the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23, he said the wage of sin is death. Who are you to sin and you don't expect the punishment for your sins? Unless you have asked for forgiveness according to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 8 to go down. The Bible says, even if your sins are as red as scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. God is not happy that we sin and is not happy that that we he's not happy that we keep in sin because he's ready he's ready to forgive our sins he has given the provision when Jesus took our sins in his body to make us righteous my friend let me tell you do not follow your enemy the the enemies of the kingdom of God today now the earth the eighth le lesson, we are going to talk about the kingdom of, of heaven. Here is the best of the news you can hear from anywhere. That we will inherit the kingdom of heaven and we will stay with God. We will live with God. Hallelujah. After all these years of suffering. Yes, we have been. Ah, let me read. Let me read for you. Uh, we are going to read the book of. Uh, we are going to read the book of uh, Matthew. No, Luke. Luke chapter twenty-three, and we will read verse forty-three. The Bible reads. Luke chapter twenty-three. Verse 43 And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, Today shall you be with me in paradise. 
Hallelujah. Jesus was talking to one of the malefactors who were crucified with him. One was abusive, but another recognized that the, for them to be crucified there was the, the reward of the evils they had been doing. But he said, but what about him? The Holy One from God. Why? Now, he turned back to Jesus and told you, Master, please, remember me. When you go to your kingdom, remember me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Jesus told him, him, he told him, very I tell you, today, not even tomorrow, today will you be with me in heaven, in the paradise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now let me tell you something. There is heaven. People do not want to talk about heaven. People do not want to talk about hell. But whether you like it or not, the way you have known God, the way you have known about sin, the way you have known about everything from the Bible, this is the way we know about hell and about uh, heaven. Let me tell you, when you are a baby, a newly born baby, a newborn baby does the thing. He, it is just there. But when you grow, when you become a child, you start thinking about you and about today. What am I going to eat today? Everything today. And the man called the Esau. He was a man, but he was a child spiritually. He said, I'm dying of anger. Now I give out my, my rations, my rights. Firstborn rights. He gave it away in exchange with food. <laughs> Meaning that he was thinking about only today. But there are other people who would say, instead of giving my birth, my, my, my first birth right, I'd rather die than to give my birth, my, my, what, my birth right. But because he was a child, he thought of today. And he gave it away. When you are a child, you think only today. But when you are a mature, an adult, an adult when uh, someone is an adult, what he or she thinks of? About tomorrow, not today. Because today is the one giving birth to tomorrow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, and tomorrow, we tomorrow we work to, to, today for tomorrow. Now, this is what now an adult does. He thinks about his old days when he's still strong. And he started today, or he started today working for the days when he will be old and weak. <laughs> I did. And he starts working today for his children and his wife or his husband, they will leave behind. And he start also working for the after death. Because after death there is life. Where will I go after this earthly life? This is what we do. We are talking about as mature uh, Christian brothers and sisters. Let me tell you, we are here in a, a, a timely, a very short time here on this earth. It's a very time short. After this, I will not call it useless. No, like others say, no. This world is not a curse. No. This world is filled with the glory of God. God didn't create a cursed earth, never. Your body, as others say, no, it is not a curse. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we are here because it's the will of God that we are here. We are passing through. 
We are in the mission of Jesus to make this world a, a disciple, this, the, the nations of this world, disciples of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Today, I am now under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, like Ezekiel. I am now telling this world, this rotting world, this sinful world, this world full of crimes and many evil things. I am telling you, though you are dry and very dry bones, but this is the will of God. God wants to change you into a prince and princess. He wants to change you into uh, heirs and heirs of his kingdom. Hallelujah. God has a good plan for you. Do not commit suicide. Do not go back to the kingdom of Satan. Do not embrace Satan. No. Come to Jesus. Come to God. The plan of God is that you will live with him eternally in heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, this is the best news that one has to has to hear in his life and has to do what to put in action because God wants you to be with him in heaven. Now, heaven is not an abstract thing. No, heaven exists. It's where God lives. It's where God reigns from. Yes, it's where God takes his control over everything. And he wants us to go and to sit with him. Brother and sisters, let me tell you, there are people when they are, will I say scholars? Yes. When they are scholars, they say that religion does, does mean anything. It's just opium. <laughs> it's when, when the Christians have problems and they do not know how to resolve them. They just say Jesus. They just talk about God and that this God does exist. This Jesus does exist. Heaven does exist. Uh, hell does exist. Let me tell you, my friend, when you do not know anything, as a scholar, don't say that that thing does exist. As a scholar, you should have a room in you to welcome other scholars. <laughs> yes, to prove what you do not know. My brother, my sister, Hell exists and heaven exists. A man who was a tycoon spoiled his daughter, giving her everything she wanted, going all over the world in a first class airplane, sleeping in every, every five of four star hotel. But one day, as she, uh, she had been eating delicious things of this world, the world revenged itself against her. She became sick and she had to die. When she was hospitalized, she called her, her father. The father came. And the girl, the daughter told him, Father, thank you for everything you have do, done for me. But Father, I have to die. And you didn't tell me anything about hell. The father, with pride, much money, a big, big head. I don't know why, but he said, Dada, who told you about, about hell? It, isn't it those, those, those stupid? Christians who don't have anything to do. It's the them because they are failed the people in this world. They want to make you fail like them. No. See, uh, daughter, hell does exist. There is no hell. The daughter, for the first time in her life, because she used to respect the father and to fear him, and he said, Father, keep silent. Hell exists. And as I talk to you right now, my feet have touched the hell. And immediately she died. Where did she go? To hell. Hell exists. You may 
I do have another you do what the testimony of such people today don't leave this world as if this is your last destination there is your last destination that is why here we should live as just passengers we are traveling we are in transit we are going somewhere in heaven or in hell it's up to you now to, cho to choose because hell our last destination is what for while we are still here on the earth when you read from the book of revelation chapter 5 through the end of the bible the bible we are talking about the end times events i we will not have the time to talk about eschatology eschatology it's the study of those uh, uh, last events in the on the earth and what will happen but I am here because of a short time. We are not going to talk about the chronology and of the eschatology, eschatological events. But I am here to warn you and to tell you that we are in the last time. It's not too late because of that fifth asked for forgiveness and in extremis. In extremis, I repeat it for the first time, in extremis, at on the last moment, one minute before the end, God saved him. You too. The man was given a second chance, but don't think that you too can have a second chance at in extremis. But the second chance is right now as I speak. If you are not sure that you will go to heaven if jesus comes down right now to take his church to heaven if you are not sure that you inherit the kingdom of heaven this is a very very moment to call upon jesus and to ask him as you saved that thief in extremis saved me too let me inherit your kingdom in heaven in heaven they are uh, uh, it's a, a wonderful place in fact paul who was a, a spiritual scholar intellectual said i can't get words to uh, to express or to express what i saw in heaven ah uh, he said that even the roads are golden and made with the sapphire when you are in heaven time the notion of time doesn't exist in heaven. In fact, we are talking about eternity. When we talk about eternity, we do not have a notion of time. That's why in heaven there is no, 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 no what? No watch. No week. No, no, no months. No year. No, no century. No. You spend there one hour and you think you come back. You find that you were there for 70, 70 days <laughs> when you, you thought that it was one hour. There is no nothing like thinking. You don't think. There is thing of, nothing of boring. You are not bored because our body, our emotions are bored, are tired. But those things don't exist in heaven. We go there with our soul and our what? Our spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> Do you understand? Now we are spiritual beings. Princes and heirs of God. Be more spiritual than the things of this world we are passing through. And we are giving more time, more interest than what is more, inter uh, uh, more important. What is the, our eternal life with God? May God bless you. What I want to tell you is that heaven is only for the princes, princesses, and the heirs of the kingdom of God, who will live with God. God will enter them, and then they will enter God. Everything is different. We see everything. We know everything. We are spiritual. 
the spirit of God is filled in us here we, when we talk about joy, when we talk about happiness, when we talk about peace, it's just a matter of abstract. It's abstract. But there, there is no abstract, my friend. It's tangible. You feel joy and you feel it. You feel happiness. You feel it. Yes, there is no sickness there, no death, because in hell, people will try to kill themselves, that they will not be possible to kill themselves. They can't, because the death will have been killed by God. Do you understand? Those are in the eschatological event. God is going to kill the death. You will, people will be calling death, death, come and kill me. But there is no death because it was killed by God. And Satan will be thrown and together with, together with all his adepts, they will be thrown in the ocean of fire whereby people will be suffering but they can't kill themselves for eternity where, while in heaven it's eternal peace, joy, happiness in hell it's eternal sufferings may god bless you once again before leaving let me tell you are you sure that when jesus comes right now he will take you to heaven when the rapture is today are you going to heaven my brother my sister let me tell you as a prince and a princess heaven is for us Meaning that the time you will make a mistake to resign from your status of prince and princess, the time you will live like a slave when you are a prince, it means that your direction, your destination is to hell. But may God intervene. May the Holy Spirit intervene and help you not to go to hell. I love you. My WhatsApp Number is plus two five six seven eight six four six five seven seven one. Once again, subscribe to our our YouTube uh, name uh, account, which is Apostle Augustine Giravatuari. And God will bless you. I love you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for this warning once again for this love telling us to strike, to do everything, to go to heaven, and to close all the doors that can lead us to hell. God will give you all the glory and honor. I surround each and everybody here with the blood of Jesus Christ. Let sin go away from us. Let the Spirit of God teach us and guide us. Let us be obedient to God, and let God be number one in our lives, so that we may inherit the kingdom of heaven. I love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen.